Well, good morning, everyone. My name is James Bellissimo. I'm the town manager of the town of Berwick. Been here since, since September. This is my uh, fourth update and uh, time's flying. Um, it's, it's been a lot of fun to be in this position. Um, just wanted to say um, thank you for, for the turnout, for the vote. Uh, it was a great, great turnout. Um, I think above average. So let's keep up, keep up the numbers, keep up the engagement. Um, we really appreciate it. As part of the vote and Warrant Article 37, we had several items that were funded for the town hall, really important. Um, pretty low hanging fruit, um, pretty low, low cost compared to the impact we're gonna see from it. One of the first priorities and one of our pretty aspirational goals, uh, we're hopeful to get a vertical lift in the auditorium by the November vote. Uh, it, is, it is ambitious, but we are hopeful that we can pull it off in time. Um, so our existing wheelchair stair lift that goes horizontal of the stairs, it's notorious for breaking down, uh, that type of model. We've met with several companies and just say, don't buy a new one. And uh, the vertical lift um, will, will definitely be in operation much, much more than our lift was. Um, but it's very important for our auditorium to be accessible. The next next piece you can see at the town hall now we have we have gutters up. So a while back we did the roof and we didn't put the gutters back up, and it just caused a host of issues where there's so much water that comes down the roof it just streams down and it infiltrates our buildings and gets next to the foundations where it's not supposed to. So the gutters are a great. Um, relatively low cost impact for fighting these persistent, um, we've had drainage and, and mold issues that we've been addressing. Tim, thank you for being with us today. Can you tell us a little bit about your company? How long you been in business? Sure, no problem. Uh, I'm Tim, well, this is Gutters by Design, and we've been at this uh, location for the last four days. Um, kind of a big project that we took on here for the, for the town. Uh, we are located in Summersworth, New Hampshire. Uh, we've been in business for four, just over four years now. Okay, you said you've been here for four days. Mm -hmm. That's like one side per day. This is a big building, <laughs> isn't it? Yes, this is a, a very big project. Um, this was uh, roughly 350 feet total of uh, aluminum seamless gutter, uh, multiple three-story downspouts, and um, you know, being a brick building, it has its own uh, challenges with attaching things to the brick and and such so it's been a uh, you know a little bit of a of a project and we wanted to take our time and make sure that we did a good job for the town so um we've been here this should be our last day so you know a four-day project wrap, uh, wrapping up today can you tell us how long these type of gutters typically last sure um you know with the proper care um you know these gutters should last anywhere from 20 to 30 years, I would say. You know, we're putting the leaf protection on them to make them uh, completely uh, maintenance free for the town so they don't have to worry about cleaning them or bothering with them for uh, a very long time. So, um, you know, we offer a very good warranty for our product. So, um, yeah, they should be, you know, 20 to 30 years at least, they should last. Okay, and I see you did some downspouts as well. And do those actually run into a area that's going to drain properly or how does that work? Yeah, so we did do a walk around with uh, Jody, the maintenance facility manager, I believe. And we did go over some of the, uh, the underground drainage and a lot of them were really old and were just plugged up that couldn't be used. Um, but there is some, uh, a, quite a bit of drainage around the property as far as, you know, um, manhole covers and stuff that are actually made for drainage so we've we've done everything we can to get the water diverted away from the foundation uh, and properly draining into whatever um, you know underground drains we could use thank you so yeah. much is there anything you'd like our viewers to know uh, no I just you know I want to give a you know a thanks to the town for choosing our company to do the project um, you know my three installers have been working their butts off all week to get this done and you know it's a holiday weekend so we're Looking forward to uh, finishing up today and, and taking the rest of the time to enjoy the, uh, the holiday weekend. The other piece to that is HVAC improvements. It is very humid uh, in the lobby downstairs area. So uh, get a dehumidifier for HVAC system, but also a humidifier for the wintertime gets really dry. 
and also a UV light that will disinfect, um, reduces dust particles, mold, uh, and we'll put that right into the HVAC system. On the to-do list um, to go along with Article 37, there is the back half of the town hall where the bricks that need to be sealed so moisture can't get in, and we're planning on repointing the steps at the town, town hall steps. I mentioned a few times a um, couple of bridges. We have the Diamond Hill Bridge, which was voted on for a bond, Praise Bridge, and the Ridland Road Bridge. Um, both bridges are now expected to come in at a cost of over a million dollars, and this is up from an expected $500,000. Over the past four or five years, we've just seen the cost escalate and escalate. So we're looking at, potentially looking at an alternative approach and see if that's feasible. It would be a significantly dis different design and it doesn't really hit all of the design elements we've been looking for, um, but it would be more in that $500,000 to $800,000 range instead of a million. We're also looking at potentially a short-term fix for the Diamond Hill Bridge, go in and secure the deck and that would be a smaller cost to be able to secure it for the next few years to be on that 50-50 list for DOT. DOT will fund bridges they call low use and redundant is the way they classify those types of bridges. And they do fund it, but it takes three, three or so years to get your way through that list. There is some good news, hopefully there is there is um, a possibility of 80-20 funding on a federal level, and that would be excellent because we can get both of those bridges done. So that is um, all of what we're looking for to address those bridges. But again, Diamond Hill Bridge, that's, that's the first priority. Um, Ridland Road Bridge serves a recreational purpose, and that's important too, but Diamond Hill's definitely first. We have made some changes to the planning and code departments. Uh, we have a history of sharing services with South Berwick, and we're doing something similar again now with code and planning. So Jen will be here Tuesday and Thursday in the office, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., and we'll, we'll be out on the field Tuesdays and Thursdays, um, 7 a.m. To, to 9 a.m., and then we'll be in the office, and then from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. for inspections. And planning, Tammy will be here Monday and Thursday normal during normal business hours. And a happy warm welcome to Shannon in her new role here as the admin assistant for both planning and code. She will be in the office Monday through Thursday. And uh, any information, um, a lot of information is on the town website at berwickmain.org. And you can see uh, if you go and you hover above departments or you can click right on departments on the town website, you can see there's a code enforcement page and a community development and planning page. All kinds of information in there. You could spend, you really could spend hours in there. On to roads. Um, so you may have noticed there has been some significant work being done in the Little River, and that is the plan to, to, to reclaim and to pave 10,000 feet of Little River Road this summer. And that's, that's happening over the next couple of weeks. Um, we had a, a few other roads and segments on our to-do list. Little River needs a surface coat. Pine Hill needs a surface coat. Long Swamp needs a surface coat. And then Rollins, Bell, and Sweetser all need to be addressed as well. We're probably going to do just Little River and a couple other smaller segments of roads this summer hold off to the spring, see where we're at with cost and with the budget that was spent through the winter time. A uh, quick update on the water plant. The, the, plant, the major upgrade is adding a pretreatment process to the system. What that helps to do is helps our water system where the, when the water comes into the system, it's pretreated. And we're adding a few other pieces like a lagoon system, maybe changing the intake structure. And we are pilot testing in late uh, this summer, August or September 2022. And the construction is anticipated for late 2023 or early 2024. We have, uh, we have some 
really exciting events coming up. Open Farm Day is in its second year, and this is all about celebrating Berwick's agricultural heritage. Envision Berwick found out a few years ago, I mean, it's been, it's been on our minds, and it's been on the community's minds for a long time. How do we preserve farmland? It's, it, it is, while we do need housing, no doubt about it, we've had some good housing projects come in. It is, it is sad to see some active farmland become inactive and turned into housing developments. And we recognized, you know, when you talk about what is rural character, active farmland, I mean, that equals, that equals a big part of that rural character picture. One of the best ways to preserve farmland is to encourage active farming. So that's what it's all about. It's about visiting the local farms in Berwick. There's awesome farmers in Berwick, you know, all kinds of different things. Um, and there's all kinds of things to do at that event. The other, other event coming up in August 6th and August 20th is Bring Your Lawn Chairs to Sullivan Square. And each event will have something a little different for all ages. We're gonna have a magician for both events, face painting, We'll have a penny farthing and a trapeze artist. We'll have great bands, beer garden for the adults, and there's just more they have to come and check out. So that's August 6th and August 20th from 3 to 8 p.m. And more can be found on the Envision Berwick Facebook page. Happy retirement to Lisa Hustis. She's brought uh, just a wealth of information and, and different skills and roles. And she started as, um, I think probably even before, she was a volunteer, worked with the Heritage Committee. She's done Berwick um, Historical Society. She was a rec, rec director. And now she's done, been doing deputy finance and HR. Uh, I really enjoyed my conversations with Lisa. She has an incredible passion and excitement for the community. Um, she's con contributed a ton. I've seen reports and studies with her name on it. Um, I think there's a, all, there's just things you'll find in the planning department when you go, wow, she was, she was part of that too. So we wish her the best, but also look forward to her continuing to volunteer for the Berwick community because we know you have more free time. A <laughs> uh, quick note on um, what happened at the last select board meeting. The, um, I made a recommendation in the select board, um, confirmed part of an art, ARPA, which is the American Rescue Plan Act, I think is the last A. And the town got about $800,000. And we had, there's four different ways you can distribute that money. One of the ways is premium pay. So during the peak of the pandemic, the town of Baroque employees were receiving a much deserved stipend for their efforts in helping us make it through. I mean, major thanks to the department heads, to the boards, and, and thanks to the thanks to you, um, everyone watching at home, for, for being part of it. And it's definitely not going away, but it feels like we're in a new, fa new phase of it that we've all been looking forward to with the community's level spread being in green. And let's keep it that way as much as possible. The other project for the ARPA allocation, we have an underground oil tank for the heating system at the town hall that needs to be replaced. So that's one of the projects. Um, the third project is um, capital improvements, specifically playground equipment for Memorial Field. So going in there, and we've, we've, we had the opportunity with Public Works to take out some of that equipment, and we want to put it back as quickly as possible. Um, a lot of it is on, on back order, and we do need to plan it. And we want to have something there for all ages, the little ones all the way for, you know, for older, older kids as well. And the last, last project, an important project, stormwater engineering. Um, we have two, two project areas. Uh, one area, it outlets under Corner Point Brewing, under One Sullivan, and it's a pretty strange, um, we don't really typically see that often where stormwater pipes go underneath buildings. It's partially submerged by the Salmon Falls River. And you'll see in a slide, there's a picture of Sullivan Square, which it's completely covered Partially it's due to that outfall, but also at a certain point when we're dealing with a hundred year flood, we're going to see, we're probably going to see some flooding downtown, but um, between 
that stormwater project and another stormwater project that'll connect to the edge site um, new stormwater system. This will increase stormwater capacity tremendously and set us up well into the future. Um, and that's, that's really what it's all about. So now we're engineering, looking at our options and trying to design as much as feasible for those big rain events. That's a big, it's a big hot button topic with the state is climate resilience. And what that means is adaptation of our infrastructure, which is just like what I was talking about. We know that rain events are good. Like, in 2008, 2009, we saw 200 year storms back to back years. We're gonna see more of that. And the less, the less it floods on streets, the less it destroys our streets, our bridges, our culverts, things like that. And I think the last, last piece I have is, we're, we're already on to November vote. And like I mentioned in our last update, as soon as we were done with the June vote results, we're already on our way to November. The significant changes for planning and any, any of the stuff from the administration or any other staff um, for major changes or warrant articles or ordinances, they need to be ready by the end of this month or early August at the latest. So if you want to follow, follow along, it's, it's always that cyclical nature where once November's done, we're going to start, you know, we have a week or so to see where we're at with things that pass and we're already planning for June. And I just appreciate you for um, for being here and and for um, for for being part of, of what we do. And I'm I'm available anytime during the week work week. You can call me at 207-698-1101, extension 111, or send me an email at townmanager at berwickman.org. Again, thank you for your time. <laughs>